going on, everyone? So, I've been talking heavily about breaking up the D'Lo Austin Reeves backcourt. I love both of them. I'm totally okay with the Lakers keeping both of them. If that's what ends up having to happen, obviously, uh, Lakers need a trade. I would prefer a trade. But if you can't find a trade, I don't want to trade just for the sake of doing a trade. So if you can find the right move, then sure, do it, pull it off, let's get it done. If not, then fine, keep D'Lo and Austin Reeves. But I do believe that you need to move one of them to the bench. And the guy that I think makes the most sense is Austin Reeves to move to the bench. Because one, D'Lo, we've seen, does not take that well. And his performance off the bench is not good to, to warrant that. Where if you look at Reeves, he's taking it more, he's just taking it better. Of course, he's not happy about it, but he's taking that better. And he's actually been more efficient. He gives you the same type of stat line but he just is far more efficient uh, coming off the bench than he is in the starting unit. Even last year, it was a big thing, right? So I just think you got to, at some point, break this backcourt up because you just lack the defense, the point of attack. Talk about two guys that are very redundant. They're, they both are very similar players in a lot of ways. Um, D'Lo, you know, I believe is the better of the two. So that's another reason why I would keep D'Angelo Russell into that starting unit because he's just the better playmaker. He's a better volume three-point shooter, right? I just like his role and his fit in the starting unit alongside LeBron James, Anthony Davis. And then to fill in your three and your two, that's where the question lies. Now, you could, if you wanted to, kind of just keep the two in the front court or in the in the back court, right? And then go with Jared Vanderbilt, right? The the big debate and the big question is Jared Vanderbilt or Rui Hachimura, right? Which one makes more sense at the three? Now, one of the big things that I talked about heavily, even when the Lakers were like 9-0 and with Rui Hachimura in the starting lineup at the three, was, yes, what happens when the offense fades, right? The offense, yes, is cooking. It's been great, but you don't have that balance that you had with Jared Vanderbilt, right? Our best lineup was still the starting five that led us to the conference finals. The problem is we didn't get very many minutes of it because Jared Vanderbilt was injured most of the season. And then even when he was healthy, Darvin Ham like refused to play that starting five, which was wild to me, considering that it's the starting five that got you to the conference finals. And so I do still think that if you're going to keep those two in the in the backcourt, you got to go with Van. I do. I just I think Reeves will be better. I think he'll be a better shooter this upcoming season, right? Like I hyped Reeves up like he was going to be the second coming of Michael Jordan, right? Got videos, all that stuff. Um, I said that I thought he would be a twenty-five and five guy, and he was you know sixteen four and five. Right. So I wasn't off or I was off, but not by a bunch. Right. If he would have shot 38 to 40 percent, he would have been a 25 and five guy. But unfortunately, his shooting was an issue. Right. But I do think his shooting will get back. So if you have his shooting plus the Andrew Russell, plus uh, if LeBron James can maintain his level of three point shooting, then I do think you have enough shooting and offense in that starting five alongside with Anthony Davis, and then you can put a Jared Vanderbilt in various, you know, actions to, to make him at least somewhat of an offensive threat, right? And then hopefully he's a little more improved shooting the three and stuff, but I do like the idea of that. Rui, if you play him at the three, I don't hate it. Again, I just have my concerns about Jared Vanderbilt. Um, or I have my concerns about not playing Jared Vanderbilt because now you don't have the defense right? Where you're kind of in the same boat, where a lot of the offensive rebounds that the Lakers gave up were long ball rebounds. Why? Because the Lakers couldn't defend the perimeter. And so teams are just jacking up threes. And when they miss, they just have to outrace D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, and Rui Hachimura. That's not very hard to do, <laughs> right? So a lot of the rebounds we were giving up were due to the lack of perimeter defense, which we were like 29th in the league last year, right? So you kind of look at the issues last year, and it's like just Vando makes a ton of sense. Okay, let's say you move Austin Reeves to the bench. I've talked about, you know, having maybe Max Christie move up, maybe you move Gabe to the point, and then D'Lo to the two, technically, right? Like, 
you have some options. I don't hate the idea of slotting Jared Vanderbilt at the two, right? Now, I know people are going to say, which <laughs> I think is going to be funny because you'll be able to tell who didn't actually watch the video, or at least to this point, but I know people are going to say, Jared Vanderbilt's not a two. You can't put him at the two. What are you talking about? You don't know basketball, blah, 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 blah. Look, <laughs> first off, Jared Vanderbilt, being slotted at the two for position's sake is not the same thing as actually playing the two. When the Lakers have Jared Vanderbilt on the court, where is he usually? Oh, that's right. He's at slotted at the guard spot defending Kyrie or Luka or Ja or Ant. Or... So, yes, you could technically... Okay, so position him at the three, put LeBron at the point... Reeves at the two, or D'Lo at the two, or whatever. The point is, is adding the athleticism and the point of attack defense and allowing Jared Vanderbilt to play that role. And then if you want to, keeping a guy like a Rui Hachimura into the starting five at the three. That's the idea, right? Now, if you want to, just for position's sake, because I've talked about this on it as it stands Lakers, not in depth, not in a video, but just kind of in passing, been like, you know, oh, like, why don't we just, like, slot Jared Vanderbilt at two, and people always lose their minds and go, Jared Vanderbilt's not a two. Like, it's like, no, you, you don't understand the idea of positionless basketball, which the Lakers have always kind of played anyway. And again, when Jared Vanderbilt's on the court, he's usually slotted into that two spot because he's defending out on the perimeter at top of the key, chasing around Steph and guards. So why not just embrace that and slot him at the two? Let him do that, right? And then you'd still have Rui and his offensive production and size, right? So now you're bigger, right? Your smallest guy on the basketball court would be D'Lo, and he's, what, 6'4", something like that? So, like, you know, so you, you have just more size. You have more athleticism out on the perimeter. You got rebounding, right? Like, you've got all of the things that you could want. Now, I still like the idea of Max Christie and then bringing in Jared Vanderbilt, right? And now you really have that perimeter defense. Now you really have that athleticism out on the perimeter, right? And, you know, for the concerns of like, oh, well, what about the offense? Like I mentioned in the Max Christie video, which go check that out if you didn't watch. But like I mentioned in that Max Christie video, Max Christie's 40% on catch and shoot threes, right? So, and he was that two straight years in both years that he's been in the league. So, I think it's safe to say he's a 40% catch-and-shoot three-point shooter. So as long as he can maintain that, then you're good, right? He'll give you enough offensive production um, just on the efficiency alone, and then you know now you can slot with Jared Vanderbilt. You'd be better defensively. And just because you start, guys, doesn't mean you have to play them all five starters 40 minutes a game. It doesn't mean you can't mix and match stuff. It doesn't mean that if the offense is, isn't really clicking and you're, you're struggling to score – you can't make that change and adapt, right? That's the whole point of a coach, right? Hey, this isn't working right now. Let's change it up. So, again, you, you'd you have the flexibility. But I just, if you want to keep Rui in the starting lineup, I think you need to move a, a D'Lo or a, or, or a Reeves to the bench. And then I think you slot in Jared Vanderbilt, right? Yeah, he doesn't give you the shooting that Max Christie gives you. Um but he just gives you the elite defense. Like I said, you'd have Rui, LeBron, D'Lo, all, you know, 40 plus percent from three. And then, you know, Anthony Davis doing Anthony Davis things. And I just think you'd, you'd get more offensive rebounds. You'd just be better defensively. I think you'd get, you know, more offensive opportunities. And I mean, even Darvin Ham was able to, to figure out how to make Jared Vanderbilt at least a, a serviceable offensive threat. You don't think J.J. Redick can do that? I mean, like, you know, setting him in pick and roll actions or, you know, as the as the screener. Um, no, you can put him in all kinds of different spots. And again, hopefully he's improved slightly, at least, at, at the three-point range to where at least teams can respect it. Um, you know, in a perfect world, I'd still prefer you go and get that, get like a, a Jeremy Grant or Cam Johnson. But even then, I think that there's an argument for that, right? Like, let's say you... Turn D'Lo, because the Brooklyn Nets apparently are interested uh, in D'Lo for his expiring contract. Like, let's say you turn D'Lo into Cam Johnson, 
If you do that, I don't hate the idea of like Austin Reeves, Jared Vanderbilt, Cam Johnson, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. Again, you're better defensively. You have the the 40% three-point shooter in Cam Johnson. You got Austin Reeves. You got the uh, LeBron James and Anthony Davis, right? I, I think even if the Lakers pull off a trade, you could still have Jared Vanderbilt kind of go that positionless size. And then, again, for those that are like, Jared Vanderbilt's not this, okay, then fine. Put, start LeBron at the point, you know, for position's sake. And then on defense, he can slot in at the four, right? So on defensive purposes, you can do that. Again, it's, it's you know, the one, two, three, four, and five is just there for paper's sake. And so people understand who's who. Okay, this guy's the point guard. This guy is that, right? But it's not like if you slot LeBron at the center and you still have Anthony Davis. Like, if to say you have the starting five of D'Lo, Reeves, uh, Rui, LeBron, and AD. If you now move D'Lo to center, does that mean that he can't play the point? No. It, it just means that they just have him slotted at the center for whatever silly reason, right? So, anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Ask a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do they? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you like the idea of, um, you know, maybe moving Vando into the, the you know the slotted two spot? Um, you know, again, he'd really be the three or slotted at the three, but you know, because on the defensive side, you'd have him kind of up high defending guards and out on the perimeter. But I have a feel whatever your thoughts are. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.